Good morning. Our identity is who we are. Identity is what gives us a sense of belonging and purpose in life. Identity on the surface can be easy to identify. For example, I'm a sister, daughter, friend, coworker, aunt, niece, granddaughter, pastor, and so on. For you, you may also be a mother, a father, a student, a grandparent, etc. These are quick ways to identify things about us. But while someone may know all these identifying facts about you, they may not truly know who you are. Who are you really? What makes you, you? What is your true identity? This is what we are going to look at today. What is your true identity? Your identity in Christ. Let's pray as we get started this morning. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you today that we can worship together, that we can praise your name, that we can praise you for who you are, for your mighty deeds and your wondrous acts towards us. Lord, I pray that as we study your word to find our identity, that we will be able to see clearly who we are in regards to you, who we are to you, um, what our importance is to you, Lord. I pray that you will help us to understand from your word what you want us to know about you as we learn about ourselves. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. So we're going to start today in Psalms chapter 139, verses 13 to 16, which says, For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written them, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. And then if we move on to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. We were created by God. Now, I don't know about you, but I love to create things, and everything I create has a special place in my heart. I have memories of making it, and memories that revolve around using it or enjoying it. The things I create are important to me because of the time and energy I put into the creating of them. How much more important are we to God? We are made in his image. He created our inmost being. He knitted us together. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. His works are wonderful. Those works, those wonderful works, include us. We were not hidden from him when we were made. When we were woven together, he saw our unformed bodies. All the days ordained for us are written in his book before one of them came to be. God has created you for a special purpose. He knew you before you existed. He knows what your life will hold because he has prepared it in advance for you. He knows the good things and the bad things, the times of sorrows and the times of rejoicing. Isaiah 43, verse 1, says, Isaiah 43, 1. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Redemption means to redeem one by paying the price. It's a releasing affected by the payment of a ransom. Redemption means deliverance, liberation procured by the payment of ransom. So what God is saying to the people of Israel, to Israel and Judah, he's saying, I have paid that ransom that is for you. He has delivered them from what was holding them captive. When we look in Ephesians chapter 1, we, said, we see that we as believers have this same redemption available to us. Ephesians chapter 1, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. This is salvation. All have been created and formed by God, and all have sinned. This sin is the bondage. The sin is the captivity we are in that we need to be set free from. Through the blood of Jesus sacrificed on the cross, we are able to have redemption and forgiveness. And the verse said that we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. This redemption is offered as a gift that we do not deserve. And when we accept it, we are able to be in fellowship with God. Our sins have been forgiven. God desires us to have a relationship with him, for him to have a relationship with us. And it is because of his love for us that he made this sacrifice, not because of our love for him. There's a song I love by the band Casting Crowns. The title of it is Who Am I? As you can probably guess, based on that title, the song is about our identity. The chorus of the song says, not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. This is what I'm telling you. Our identity is not based in ourselves. Our salvation is not based in us. Our identity in, is based in what Christ has done for us and our response to that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, First John 3, verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. Matthew West wrote a song, Hello, My Name Is. And in this song, he says, What a love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called his children. So he's speaking from First John 3. That we should be called his children. And then he goes on to say, Hello, my name is child of the one true king. I've been saved, I've been changed, and I have been set free. So you see me, he's like, hello, here, this is my name. I am. Who am I? Oh, I am the child of the one true king. That is my identity. I've been changed, been saved, been set free. I am the child of the king. Not only are we the children of the king, we aren't simply part of this group of believers. John 10, verse 3 says, The sheep hear his voice, and he calls them by name and leads them out. Jesus is referred to many times as the shepherd, and we are the sheep. So in this verse, it is talking about us being led by the shepherd, and we know him, he knows us, and he calls us by name. He knows who we are deep down. He knows our identity. The Casting Crown song I mentioned earlier, it continues with the statement, Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name? Would care to feel my hurt? Who am I? Why would he care about me? Let's continue to answer these questions. We already know from the verses we've looked at that we are created, we're chosen, we're redeemed, we're loved, we're called by name. But what about, like, why? What about our hurts? Why does he know our name? What is going on? Well, in Psalm 56, verse 8, it says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. God remembers your pain and sorrows. He doesn't turn the other way. He doesn't simply wipe away your tears. He collects them. He remembers the pain you have gone through. Now, to me, this verse is very profound. I, there have been times that I've gone through many sorrowful and sad filled times with many tears. One of those times was at the beginning of COVID 
And we had to be separated from everyone we loved. And we couldn't just go and visit my nieces and nephews, give them hugs, receive hugs. I was filled with much sorrow and sadness over that. Or when my grandfather passed away, there was much sadness and sorrow. God knows those things that have happened. And he hasn't simply come and wiped away my tears so that I would be happy again. No. He comes. He collects my tears in a bottle. And it's like he puts them on his bookshelf so that he can see and remember the tears that we have shed. He doesn't just wipe them away and forget about them and think, oh, their life is fine. No, he knows that we have experienced deep loss and sadness. He collects them. He records our sorrows. He knows life is not easy and sunshine and roses all the time. We see that even though we are just one person among many in the body of Christ, God knows our name. He cares about each one of us. Now, I don't know about you, but it's a big deal to me when someone knows my name. I think this comes because I've been part of a big family my whole life. By the time I was born, I was number four, and then kids just kept coming after that. Till there were ten children, plus my parents in the family. So I had lots of siblings, and my dad was a pastor. So I was the children's pastor. Or the, well, I was, he was the children's pastor. I was the children, child of the pastor. So at church, everyone knew who I was. Everyone knew I was Pastor Ron's daughter. But for the most, that, for the most part, they didn't know which daughter I was. They didn't know my name or anything that was special or unique about me from the rest of Pastor Ron's children. I was always just part of the group. They'd be, oh, let your mom know that I'm praying for her. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. But they knew that I was part of his family, so the message would get to them. So, to learn that God knows my name, and that he cares for me individually, he calls me by my name, that is special. That is unique. And that is, for every believer, it is that way. When someone knows your name and remembers it, it can show you the value that they place on the relationship that they value their relationship with you and they want it to continue. You are important to them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 shows us some examples that God gives of the importance he has for us. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So then moving on to Matthew chapter 10. It's talking about birds again in verse 29. It says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. So he's saying, well, how much sparrows are worth? They're sold two for a penny. They're not worth that much. But they don't fall to the ground without the Father knowing. And then he says, but even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So, who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt? I am of more value than the sparrows. I am important to him. He sees us as having value. God knows your name. He has given you value. And he cares for you in the midst of any pain and sorrows you may be going through. But he doesn't just collect our tears in a bottle and put it and remember our tears. In Psalm 55, God tells us what we can do with our sorrows and our cares and our worries. In Psalm 55, verse 22, it says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be shaken. God sustains you. When you have worries and cares, he takes care of you. He keeps you lifted and going. 
He will not let those who believe in him to fall, to stumble away. He is there to sustain you. Cast your cares on him, and he sustains. And then in Psalm 68, we read this again. He says in verse 19, Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. This ties back to the message of salvation. Our escape from death, our freedom, comes from the sovereign Lord. He daily bears our burdens. It's not a, oh, not this one again. I already carried their burdens for the last week. They're on their own now. I have other people to take care of. It's not that at all. He daily carries our burdens, and he continually tells us to bring our burdens to him. Cast your cares upon the Lord, for he will sustain you. Romans 8 gives us a little glimpse into why we can see God as a God who is going to sustain us. So if we look at Romans chapter 8, verse 32, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? This passage where this verse comes from is talking about things trying to come against us and knock us down and make us fall, make us sin, make us lose our salvation, make us lose God. He's saying, God gave Jesus on the cross for us. He is going to protect us from anything that comes against us. He will give us everything we need to stand firm. He will not let the righteous be shaken. He daily bears our burdens. He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, for you. Lauren Daigle, in her song, You Say, says this statement. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? In other words, is life more than just good times, bad times? Not good enough. It's what my mind keeps telling me. That nothing is of any worth in life. And then she says, she's calling out to God, remind me once again just who I am. because I need to know. I need to hear it from you again. Just tell me again. And then these powerful lines that come, that we see in Scripture the truth of these words. You say, I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say, I am strong when I think I am weak. You say, I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, you say, I am yours. These words are what God thinks about you. We may feel like nothing we do can ever measure up. We may think no one cares. We may fall short. But these words are true because when I can't feel anything, when I feel like I'm alone, I can know from Scripture that God still loves me. When I am weak and I just can't go one more day, because of the strength of God, I am still strong. When I fall short, because coming to God does not mean sin stops. When I sin again and again and I keep struggling, God still holds you close. He doesn't let go. Why? Because we belong to him. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. Who has decided not to be our friend anymore? Or who has decided they don't want to be around us? Why? Because when I don't belong to those around me, I still belong to God, regardless of what has happened. As we go through life, we struggle to find our place. Sometimes it comes easier than others. 
Sometimes we feel like we never really fit in. Sometimes we're fighting within ourselves about what is true. It can be so easy to believe the lies that we are not good enough, that the world would be better off without us, that we are stupid, that we will never belong anywhere, that no one cares, no one even knows who I really am. I promise you that that is not true of everyone around you. There are people around you who do care. There are people who want to know you, the real you. The you that you think you need to hide from everyone. I want you to know that I care about you. If you think you are alone and you feel alone, reach out. I will be there for you. But it's not about even me caring about you. That's not even the point. It is about God. God knows who you are. He values your life and has created you for a purpose. You weren't a mistake. And even though life might seem completely out of control right now, and you may feel isolated and alone, I am here to tell you that you aren't. God has seen your tears and heard your cries. He has not turned his back on you yet, and he never will. Once we have given our life to God, we are his forever. There is nothing that can change our status. No matter what you do, or how many times you mess up at the same thing, God always forgives. God always holds us when we fall apart. You are God's child, and he loves you more deeply than you will ever be able to understand. Romans 8, verses 30 to 37 to 39, give us just a glimpse of this kind of love and how forever this love is. Romans 8, 37 to 39 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, so things that have happened, things that are happening, or the future, whatever's going to happen. Nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, the highs, the lows, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from that love. Nothing can separate you from God. Once you have chosen God as your Savior, you are stuck with him forever. He will not leave you. Lauren Daigle in the song, she concludes with, with this line after she says what God has said. She says, the only thing that matters now is everything that you think of me. In you, I find my worth. In you, I find my identity. That is who you are. That is how you know who you are. It is in Christ that we find these things. So who are you in light of this glorious God? Who are you in light of what we have read in the scriptures today? It's simple and straightforward. And it doesn't ever change. You are his. And you are loved. You are his. And you are loved. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that we are worth more than the sparrows. Thank you that you care about our tears. You care about our sorrows, Lord. You care when we are hurting. And when things are hard, you don't walk away. You are right there with us. Lord, thank you that our identity in you is secure, that it doesn't change based on what we do. It's not about what we do, but it's about who you are. It's not about who we are, but it's about what you do, Lord. Our identity is secure in you. Thank you for that freedom we can live in, knowing that your love for us does not change. Your forgiveness for what we do is eternal, Lord. I pray that everyone will go from these scripture passages and know 
that it is true that they can find their identity in you, that they can be yours, and that they are loved deeply and completely by you. Pray all of this in your mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. Go in his peace and love this week.